What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp new update video for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about the features contained in the newest version of SketchUp, SketchUp 2021.1. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so there's a page on SketchUp's website where they talk through the exact features that were added in this newest version. I will link to this in the notes down below if you want to read about some of these in more detail. So this particular update has really been focused on making the behavior of different tools more uniform in SketchUp. So it's really a usability upgrade, but I did want to talk through some of these because I think they could actually have some pretty significant effects on the way that you use the program. So for a lot of tools inside of SketchUp, they've got a behavior that allows you to toggle on and off um, the different uh, modifiers to the tool. So for example, if I activate the move tool, if you remember, we can tap the control key in order to jump into copy mode, right? So what that means is that means that I don't have to hold the control key in order to activate copy mode. But there have been other tools where that hasn't been the case. So for example, if you were to activate the scale tool, in the past, if you remember, if you wanted to uniform scale about center, what you would have to do is you would have to hold the control key down on your keyboard, right? So you just have to click and hold and just hold it there while you're moving your mouse around. So if I was to do that in SketchUp 2020, for example, notice how as long as I hold the control key, this goes to about center, but then if I let up on it, it would jump back to not about center, which was always a little bit weird to me. So now what they have instead is now if I just tap the control key, notice how this little red box shows up. So now that's a persistent tool that stays active as long as I don't hit the control key again. So I can scale, I can scale again, I can scale again, all the while that's staying active. So instead of having to hold down the control key, what you do instead is just tap the control key in order to do this. So it's the same for the shift key. Now if you tap the shift key, what it's going to do is it's going to lock this to uniform scale. So what you can do is you can use this as a toggle where before you had to hold down keys on your keyboard. So this change has also happened to the eraser tool. So if you activate the eraser tool, um, remember how before what you could do is you could hold the shift key down in order to hide geometry inside of your model. But as soon as you let up on the shift key, that goes away, right? And then it goes back into regular eraser mode. Well, now it's actually giving you the option to do either one. So you can either tap the shift key. So if you do a single tap on the shift key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna lock this into that mode, or you can hold the shift key. And then if you hold the shift key, you can click and drag as long as you want to and then let up on the shift key and it'll go back into standard erase mode. So this tool now has the option for holding down the key on the keyboard and just tapping it in order to toggle the tool, which these toggles are gonna to be really good because it was kind of frustrating to always have to be holding keys down in order to get these tools to do different things. So in addition, it also got a little bit smarter where if you tap the alt key, to go into unhide mode, it automatically switches to hidden geometry mode so you can see that hidden geometry inside of your model. So now I can just tap the shift key in order to go into hide mode, or I can tap the alt key in order to go into unhide mode, just like this. So in addition, they've also made the modifiers persistent. And what that means is that means that if you remember in the past, what you would do if you wanted to create copies of something is you would tap the control key in order to go into copy mode, then you would move your mouse and click. And what this would do is it would drop you back out of copy mode um, into regular move mode. Well, now you can see how that tool is act actually persistent across multiple different moves. So what that means is that means as long as the tool is active, you can keep clicking and staying inside of copy mode so your tool modifiers stay active when you're doing this. So that means you're not gonna have to do nearly as much tapping of the control key anymore in order to activate this copy mode. And if you remember creating multiple copies and having to tap the control key every time could get pretty old. So I think this is a good improvement. So in addition, other tools are retaining this as well. So for example, if you use the uh, rotate tool in copy mode, notice how that tool is now staying active as well. So what that means is that means that you don't have to come back in here and tap the control key to reactivate this. So the same things happened with the tape measure tool and the protractor tool. So those are also remaining active. So now you can use this to create multiple different guides. You don't have to worry about this reverting back anymore. So same thing with the protractor tool. So another tool that had the toggle added is the paint bucket tool, which if you remember has a couple different modifiers. Well now if you tap the shift key, the paint all matching stays active. If you tap the control key, the paint all matching stays active. So those are now toggles as well. 
So they've also added the ability to pre-lock some other tools. So if you remember with the rotate tool, what happens is if you activate that and then you tap the up, left, or right key, that locks this to the different axes. Well, um, what that did is that allowed you to pre-lock it before you were using the tool. Well, it works the same now with the line tool, the tape measure tool, and the move tool. So now if I just want to draw along the red axis, I can tap the left arrow key and then, or the green axis. And what that's going to do is that's going to pre-lock this to that axis. Now I will say, I don't think this one's going to be as big of a deal. I think that's more helpful for the rotate tool, which it already had. But if you wanted to do some pre-locking, you can definitely do that. So in addition, another thing that I think is going to be very helpful is they've upgraded the way that the face orientation is created. So if you remember before, if we were to go into SketchUp 2020, um, what would happen is if you drew like a rectangle like this, your face orientation was kind of random, right? Like it would sometimes draw the front side facing your camera. It would sometimes draw the front side facing somewhere else. And I don't think anybody really understood why it was doing that. Well, now what they've done is they've taken this and they've set this up where this acts in a more predictable fashion. And so what that means is that means that anything that's drawn on the ground plane it's always gonna draw with the front face facing up. So you don't have to worry about anymore drawing this on the ground plane and then it creating a bunch of faces that are facing the wrong direction and you having to do a bunch of reversing of faces. That's not gonna be an issue anymore. Um, so that's facing the ground plane. So for things that are actually standing up, face orientation is now created based on your camera location. So if I draw a rectangle that's standing up like this, notice how the front side, the light side, is facing towards the camera. However, if I was to rotate like this and do the same thing, now the face orientation is created based on the location of my camera. So that means that you can tell exactly how those faces are going to be created and control where the front sides are going to face when you're creating new things inside of your model. So there have also been a couple different performance improvements. So if we scroll down, for example, the API class, which is the um, programming class that a lot of extensions use to create a lot of geometry, um, that has been improved. And so they're saying that you should experience changes in extensions like Artisan, SubD, um, basically the ones that are working with large amounts of geometry. So we'll see, I haven't had a chance to test this, but um, it would be nice to see some improvements there. So in addition, now live components are aware of the units of your model. So that was something that a lot of people had requested because um, you could only get these to download in either metric or basically whatever these had been created in. Well now, um, these will react to whatever you set your model units to. So if you work in metric, the live component should work in metric. If you work in imperial, then the live component should work in imperial. So there have been some other smaller changes to some other things as well. You can read through the rest of this on your own and see what those are. Um, one thing that you might see inside of layout is the type to scale input. So th that allows you to come in here and actually type a scale inside a layout instead of having to go through the whole drop down list and picking one that you like. So there's a number of different bug fixes in here as well. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this new update, what you think about the features. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.